as a UK citizen, I can go back to the UK, I can work there at any time I want. You can explore what's out there, have the adventure of a lifetime and build the life that you want to build. Yes, Brexit influenced my decision to move on. Hey guys, so I was thinking about whether to do this video or not. In the end, I've decided to do it because I think there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of encouragement that I can give to others. And I think it can do a lot of good for people if they're to hear what I have to say in this video. For about five years now, I've been living outside of my home country of the UK, and it's been one of the best decisions I've made and I don't regret it. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why I made the decision to move away and why I'm happy with my life at the moment. So let's get into the video. So let's begin with a bit of context. So I'm originally from Newcastle in the northeast of the UK. This is where I was born, raised, grew up, went to school and university. Whilst I was at university in Newcastle, I had the opportunity to study abroad in France. And this was my first experience, not only living outside of my hometown of Newcastle, but also outside of my home country, the UK. And it was a very, very eye-opening experience, but one that I really enjoyed nevertheless. And after that initial experience, it left me with a curiosity and a desire to go and explore more of the world. And as a result, I ended up going back to France, both as on internships and to study part of my master's there. And it's also the reason why I ended up in Spain, which is where I live at the moment. So now that you know how I ended up living abroad, let me tell you about the reasons that influenced my decision to move abroad and some of the good things that have come as a result of that. First of all, let me talk from a personal life perspective. And essentially, this comes down to a different way of life. Now, having grown up in the UK, and this, this goes for everyone really, wherever you were born and raised and you grew up. If you grow up in that place, you essentially become accustomed to a particular way of life and it becomes a very familiar way of living. And you know, growing up in the UK, I was obviously surrounded by British values, culture and the way of life. When you move abroad, you essentially experience a culture shock where the way of life that you knew growing up the way of life that you currently have is challenged by a new way of thinking, a new way of doing things in the new country that you're living in. And depending on where you're coming from and where you're moving to, you'll see this to varying degrees. So for example, if you grew up in France and you moved to Belgium, then that culture shock is not gonna be on the same level as someone who perhaps grows up in the United States and then moves to China, for example. So like for most people going abroad for the first time who've been brought up in one culture, that culture shock was quite a challenge for me when I first moved to France. But the key is to go with an open mind, understand why that culture is the way it is, and try and assimilate it, adapt, integrate into that culture because by doing so it'll open you up to a whole new way of doing things and you might find things that you like and prefer more about your new culture that you're experiencing compared to your home culture and after that first experience living in france for me that's what i found like i really adapted quite well to the french way of life i really liked it and i really enjoyed it um, and it made me go back essentially. And when I lived in Paris, I particularly enjoyed the Parisian way of life, the social life, the food, um, the friends that I made, not so much the public transport and the stress, but the other stuff was good. And even though I love London as a city as well, and it's really great, there's this je ne sais quoi about Paris, you know, super cliche. I don't know, that's, that's all I can say. You know, Paris just has something about it that you know, it, it takes a hold of you. But of course, those of you who follow me will know that I moved a little bit more south and down to Spain, and I now live in Madrid as a result. And, you know, comparing the UK, France, and Spain, all very different cultures. But because I'd had that first cultural experience of living abroad, then the culture shock wasn't so great because I knew how to embrace myself for it in a sense, and I knew that I needed to be open to a new way of doing things. And having lived in the UK, having lived in France, and now living in Spain, I've seen parts that I like of each culture and I've managed to create and build a lifestyle that's unique to me and that I never would have been able to build if I hadn't taken those first steps and gone abroad. And those good things in that different lifestyle are manifested in the, the form of the way I eat, you know, my social life, my daily routine. I feel like I'm a lot, lot healthier. I eat a lot of different foods now as a result of having lived abroad. Uh, I eat a lot later, actually. I eat more in line with, you know, Spanish mealtimes than, than, um, than UK mealtimes, for example. 
people. Obviously the weather in Spain is a lot better than in the UK so I find myself outdoors a lot more as well. And of course in my case I moved to countries where English is not the official language so I've picked up two new languages in the process. I'm now fluent in French and in Spanish thanks to living abroad. And we'll come back to this in just a second but trust me learning the language opens a whole new host of doors for you. The second reason I moved abroad was thinking about my professional life, my long-term career development and opportunities. So as much as I very much wanted to live abroad and enjoy a different way of life to the UK, I knew that if I wanted to be serious about my career, then I had to go to a place where I could have good professional opportunities and long-term career progression. So whilst I was in France, Paris of course being the capital, my job search which led me there, of course it was targeted in Paris, which is the economic capital and the capital city of France as well. So of course in a city like Paris, I was comfortable that I could find suitable professional opportunities going forward. In Spain, of course, everyone thinks about a lifestyle centered around, you know, a relaxed pace of life, the sun and the beach. And as much as I would have loved to move to a city like Valencia or Malaga or somewhere in the south and, and have a much more relaxed pace of life I knew that I had to be realistic about my career. The free spirit side of me and the logical reasoning side of me came to an agreement that a move to Spain would be contingent upon finding suitable professional opportunities, which led me to search in Barcelona and Madrid. Either one of these two would have been fine in terms of professional opportunities, but in the end, I ended up in Madrid. I'm glad I ended up here and I'm, I'm really happy here as well. Anyways, coming back to the main point is that I wanted to have an international career. I wanted to start my career abroad because as much as there are fantastic work opportunities in the UK uh, and you can build a nice career in the UK, um, I really wanted to have that opportunity to just work abroad um, and if you think about it like if you look at some of the top business leaders top executives you'll see that they have experience working abroad an experience living and working in a foreign country is something truly truly valuable to an employer in today's globalized world from a language perspective if you can learn another language whilst living abroad then that's fantastic it's a really great skill to have as well but not just from a language perspective also from a cultural awareness perspective obviously being thrown into a different culture and having to learn about a new way of doing things and adapt to a new way of life it's a truly valuable skill, particularly with diverse organizations um, that are around the world now. The third reason I wanted to move abroad, somewhat connected to both of the previous points, is the networking opportunities that will come and friends that I have abroad as well. Now, both from my personal and professional life, I've met a whole host of people and I'm really close with a lot of them and I still get in touch with a lot of them. I have some fantastic friends that I've made through living abroad and it's one of the best things that I've found as well about living abroad. And I feel that such is the case that if you make friends in a foreign country and particularly if you um, speak their language and you make friends with a, a person who speaks the language of the country that you're living in, you can form much deeper bonds and become much closer with people because they become your your immediate support circle and your, your close friends and, and people of trust in that place that you're living. Some of the best friendships I have today have come as a result of living abroad. And I think that in itself is testament to the fact that living abroad um, is a great opportunity to meet people and to make friends. And finally, I was debating on whether to include this as part of the video or not, but ultimately I've decided yes, Brexit. Brexit influenced my decision to move abroad. Now, I'll not get into the politics of Brexit. I will simply state the facts and explain to you how those facts influenced my decision to leave the UK. Now, the European Union set up a concept known as the single market, which is based on four key freedoms. The free movement of goods, the free movement of capital, the freedom to establish and provide services, and the free movement of people. What that means is that citizens of EU member countries can move to other countries to live and work essentially unrestricted. In practice, there are of course some controls in place, but, but largely speaking, you know, you can move from one EU country to another and you'll be treated like a citizen of that country in your search for work. Because of the principle of freedom of movement of people, you can essentially look for opportunities in other countries. Whilst the UK was a member of the EU, of course, UK citizens could do this. They could move to, for example, France or Spain, like I did, uh, or they could move to Germany or Italy or what, any other member country of the EU. A UK citizen could move there and live and work uh, and study um, pretty much unrestricted. Brexit obviously changed all that. And as of the end of 2020, UK citizens can still visit the European Union Union without a visa, um, respecting the 90 to 180 day rule. But if they want to move there on a permanent basis for work, then they have to go through the visa process 
and it's much, much more difficult to find uh, professional opportunities in the EU if you're not from a member state. And with Brexit on the horizon, I knew that this was how things were going to go. And knowing that moving to the EU was probably the easiest way to seek out professional opportunities and live abroad and perhaps establish a permanent residence at some point as well, I decided to throw the dice one last time while I was living in France. And that's essentially how I moved from France to Spain. So taking advantage of my freedom of movement one last time. Because as I say, this was pretty much my last opportunity to do this, to establish residence, to live and work unrestricted in an EU country before new restrictions were imposed. Whereas as a UK citizen, I knew that I can go back to the UK, I can work there at any time I want pretty much. Now today, it is obviously a lot harder to move to an EU country if you're a UK national, but I would never ever discourage anyone from trying to pursue their dreams if that's what they really want. Even whilst I was in this process of uncertainty because there was still some doubts around whether it could be done, whether it couldn't be done, uh, leading up to the, the Brexit deadline, if we wanna look at it like that, I managed to do it. I made sure that my language skills were up to scratch. I made sure that I had a very good cultural integration where I was living. I made sure that if there were qualifications that I could get in the country that I was living, that I went after them to prove that I was on the level that employers were looking for um, when I was seeking a job. So though it might be harder, I would never say that it's impossible and I would never discourage anyone to do it. And you know, in the world, there's not just the EU, there are countries in Asia, countries in Africa, in South America, North America, Oceania, you know, the world is a massive place. You don't have to limit yourself to one country, to one continent. You can explore what's out there, have the adventure of a lifetime and build the life that you want to build. So though this video isn't exactly money related, this is somewhat of an investment in yourself. Um, and it's also, you know, in the long term from an employment perspective, it could pay off in terms of, you know, a salary increase or a premium that employers might see in you uh, by you being, you know, a global citizen or someone who is culturally aware or has additional languages and qualifications thanks to living abroad. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment and let me know where would you like to move abroad. I'll see you on the next one and let's get this money.